Cut the flesh from the from the bones. I like to cut the flesh from the bones, and I like to go upwards with it. You know what I'm saying? Cut the belly open. Get up in them guts. Well. I was, hoping my, I was hoping my brother would join me, but I bet his bitch ass is still asleep, so I'm just going to go ahead and do this. So I have a metric ass ton of fucking figures to show off today. Because I have been getting figures, but I just haven't had time to, uh, to showcase them as of yet. And I'll start with my already opened one. Which, I finally found this in Pryor, Oklahoma, because... I couldn't find it anywhere else, at least not for a decent price. I found it at FTW, a store called FTW, um, and I got it. Like, this is going online for, like, 50, 60 bucks a pop, but I got it. This is the the NECA re-release of the old Kenner Terminator figures. So, there was those old Kenner Terminator figures when they were trying to market Terminator to kids. And there was this, this figure, which a lot of people liked the best, and it comes with a regular arm, and then it comes with this arm, and this arm has two different accessories you can put on the end of it. Um, the bright pink shirt, which nobody ever wondered, uh, nobody ever knew why Kenner went with a bright pink shirt for the Terminator, and he also comes with a gun. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, I got him. Um, I was really happy to find him, but there's his... His regular arm, you can put on him in his gun and his his missile tip, whatever, for his arm there. Um, so, yeah, I got that. And then I got a butt ton of other things going on. God, what, I wanna, what do I want to start with, for Christ's sakes? We're going to start with... <clears throat> I got the Cyberpunk Takamura figure. I got it on sale for like $10 at Walmart because everybody hates Cyberpunk. That's the thing to do these days. So I got Takamura. I'm going to go ahead and open him up real quick with my, my gut and knife. I like, the, I like the young girls. I like the young girls. It goes like this. And the gut and knife goes like this. I'm fully prepared this time around for for opening figures. I have a big ass trash bag beside me and everything. And I have a stand now for my phone. <laughs> Let me know if this video is skipping, by the way, if I cut out or whatever, because sometimes whenever I live stream from in here, it cuts out. And it does that when I'm connected to my internet. Right now I'm just connected to cell. <clears throat> so hopefully that's better. Because I think this room has some, some problems. So there's his cyberpunk stand. Takamura is a bad mofo. I love that character. Right, let me get my trash bag fluffed out here. Uh, these figures, by the way, are figures like this one I got very recently. But there are some figures I'm going to show off today that I got months ago or for Christmas. And I still haven't opened them or showed them off or anything. There's Takamura's gun. Look at that. Yeah. Uh, get his Takamura arm free. So yeah, there's Takamura, right? He's God, I just love the character so much. Like, um, I don't know, he's just a bad, he's a bad mofo, and I love the way he talks. He's he's really cool. 
So let's talk about as you can see the sculpt on his neck. It's got all the uh, all the all the bionics and shit. Um, move his head down. You can see all of his his brain pieces there. Really solid figure. Really sturdy figure. It's got the corpo look going on. Really good. Let's put his gun in his hand here. Oh yeah, that fits so good. So though, there's his gun. Fits perfectly in his hand. Takamura. I really like it. He's gonna go with my. I have that. I have the V figure, the male V figure. So he's a good addition for that. Um, this next one, we're gonna move over to um, Marvel. Marvel Legends. Found this guy on sale, and I always wanted to get him, but I could never find him. Marvel's Maverick. Good old Maverick. I got him. He's fucking awesome. I really like the weird characters like this. Not so much weird, but you know, the kind of the B characters. And you know, of course, I'm a huge X-Men fan. Let's get this guy out of his out of his box here. So, he's got two pretty badass guns. Look at that. I like that gun. He's got that gun. Very cool. He comes with um, an arm for a build a figure for Strong Guy. He's one of the few build a figures I actually want. I used to have Strong Guy, and I want the whole thing. So, now that I have this, I'll probably just go on eBay and buy the different pieces. And then, of course, you have Maverick himself being Maverick. Um, it's just so cool, man. Like, it's a neat figure. You got all the tubes and stuff all connected to the backpack. Good joints. It's got a holster for one of his guns. Double leg joints, which I'm, I am glad double leg joints have become the standard for toys now because they are better than any other leg joint. And action figure history, we're gonna put his guns in his hands. See? So awesome. Dig it. There's his uh, his face sculpt. Very good paint job. Just good stuff. All the way around. He's ready to go at it. So yeah, I got that figure. Um, Let's see. God, what do I want to open next? I think what I want to open next... Let me get this stand on this guy. Shabam! Look at that. Hey Rob, I was hoping uh, Steve would join me on this live stream here, but he's, he's probably still asleep or something. I don't know. He hadn't, he hadn't responded. I'm going to open this, and I might do something very controversial for me, because everybody knows I like taking my figures out of the package, except for a very few. I might keep these in package. I got this a while back, and I have still never opened it. I've been too busy. This is the, from the company Super 7, the reaction figures, which, you know, they're all right, but there's only a few I'd actually really get, other than they're, they have the reaction, or the Super 7, like, I think they're called Mega, or something like that, they're the actual, like, fully posable figures like these, but these are the small guys. Um, but the only other reaction figures I have that are, like, the small guys, I have a lot of the, uh, Dark Crystal figures um, that Reaction did. So, and I don't think I'm going to take these guys out of the packaging. So, what I've got here 
It's some good shit. I have got a couple of the reaction Toxic Crusaders figures because I love Toxic Crusaders. So you got Toxie with his mop and his barrel belt thing. Um, and the reason why I don't think I'm going to take these guys out of the package and just hang them on the wall is because look at that art. This is one of the things I love the most about this. One of the most nostalgic things for me about the old 90s action figures were the bright colors. Toxic Crusaders was just all neon and crazy. Um, you got all this art on the back, and I think I'm going to hang these guys on the wall. And um, You've got Toxie, Major Disaster, a Headbanger, Junkyard, Dr. Kill em Off, and Radiation Ranger, right? And I don't know. I just I really kind of want to keep them on the wall, like just in in their boxes. Like this is so cool. I already have an original, you know, nineteen ninety two or three, whatever, Toxic Crusader and Kill 'Em Off, um, and a couple others out of package because that's the only way you could find them. So I really think I'm going to keep these guys in package because I mean, it's just cool. So I got Toxie, and I also got Kill 'Em Off. Those are the ones I really wanted to get right out the bait, right out the gate. So, and Kill Moss Weapons Glow and whatnot. And so, you know, it's just, I just miss shit like this. You know, it's just super crazy colors and, and you know, just this really dumb shit. And I own the entire cartoon series, all one season of it. And it's actually hilarious cartoon to watch. It's actually really funny. So I got those guys. Put those here, my very limited camera thing I got here. We're going to go over to Mortal Kombat. I got the uh, purple variant of Sub-Zero. Sub-Zero. I'm going to go ahead and open this guy because he is awesome. With MK11, um, you know, you got all these variants and stuff you can unlock in the game, um, which is kind of a cash cow as far as uh, McFarlane figures goes because, you know, they can make all those figures if they want, you know, and, you know, sell them and, and you know, just essentially just repaints of the same figure over and over again, and a lot of collectors will buy every single one of them. I don't necessarily collect a lot of Mortal Kombat stuff. You know, I have the games and whatnot. Um, and I really sort of like the old figures, but these new McFarlane figures I really, really dig. Um, McFarlane, honestly, for me, McFarlane has sur surpassed NECA in quality um, for figures. Um, I'm, it's rare that I'm buying a NECA figure these days, although I just bought one today, and I'll show that one off as well. So one of the coolest things you get with this is you get this. It's a skull. Frozen skull. It's purple. Also reminds me of the toys from the 80s and 90s. If you notice, a lot of the toys I choose to get are some of the most ridiculous ones. Because um, I miss the old ridiculousness. You've got... Ice Axe. Another Ice Axe. He also comes with a stand. Get him out of here. And then he got Sub Zero himself. So, you know, he's he's got uh, he's got a head that can turn around and go upside down, all you know, all crazy. Um, you know, just the standard McFarlane articulation. One thing I like about a lot of McFarlane toys is a lot of them's joints. They come out and their joints are already. They're already ready, you know, they're not like super tight. You don't have to soak a lot of them in water, although I do some of them anyways. Or put them in hot water before I try to do do stuff with them. Um, but yeah, that's Sub-Zero. Uh, I'm going to put it up, put his axes in his hand, in his hands. Hands on this figure are really solid so it's going to be hard to get your axes in his hands but there we go there's one and then you just kind of have to push him into his hands and then here's another one 
So yeah, I got him from Sub Zero or from Mortal Kombat. From Sub Zero, what the fuck? He's he can stand over here, I guess. And I'll do. I will get more detail. I also got Scorpion from Sub Zero. For from Sub, I keep saying from Sub Zero. What the fuck? From Mortal Kombat. So. Maybe it's because this last movie should have been called Sub Zero because it was lots of Sub Zero in it, being an asshole. Which I mean, come on. To be honest, asshole Sub Zero is the best Sub Zero, right? Asshole Sub Zero is Sub Zero living his best life. So we got uh, once again Mortal Kombat stand, and let's get his stuff free. Ouch! Poked myself. Okay. So this is kind of neat. So he comes with his get over here, you know his his chains. This for well, Wakazashi and Katana. And this and uh, this. This badass motherfucker. Look at that. Good armor on this dude. Looks fantastic. Really, really cool figure. Also, if you look at his feet. Look at those, look at those feet. Look at those toeses. Really cool. Um, of course, these go in here. So, I don't know if they attach. Oh, yes, they do attach to the figure. They do attach to the figure. So, I've got to figure out how they attach to the figure. Head bone connected to the shoulder bone. Oh, I see how they connect to the figure, so. Let's get out his little thing here. Okay. So, this one goes up here like so. Hmm. So basically, he's got these three slots in his side, and then so this one goes here like that, and then this one will clip into these two right here. So I'm gonna have to uh, when I have more time later, I'm gonna have to push those in so he can have all of his shenanigans hanging off of his belt. So what we're gonna do first, though, is we're going to wrap this like this three d action get over here So yeah, and you're welcome, by the way, for those, those sound effects, you know, it's a little extra, a little extra something I like to provide. 
So yeah, there's there's him right there doing his thing. Really cool. And then we have my favorite character to play as far as the latest game goes. My favorite character to play in Mortal Kombat is Sub-Zero. Um, because I'm basic like that. But fucking, uh, my, my favorite character to play as far as getting through the campaign for Mortal Kombat 11. This motherfucker right here. Liu Kang. And the reason why is because I just bicycle kicked over and over and over and over again and beat the game. So, Liu Kang. He's a cheap ass motherfucker. That's how he do. I'll always remember the original Mortal Kombat movie. One one that was made back in 1990-something, 92 or some shit like that. Um, and I'll always remember the first of it. Anytime someone says... Liu Kang to me. I'm always like, because that's what the kid sounds like at the first one. We're like, about little kids, and then he's like, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll, your soul is mine. That's what he says, and the kid yells. Lee. There's a little combat stand once again, and this guy comes with extra, extra bait in hands. So we've got a chop hand and then we have got BAM BAM finger of doom and then he's got his and nunchucks and one of the best loot designs I've ever, I've ever seen in anything. I really liked his design in the game too. Looking, he's ready to beat some ass. He's ready to bicycle kick. Whoa, 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 whoa. He's ready to win the game for me. Good old Liu Kang, my buddy, my source of inspiration to get through Mortal Kombat 11 story, which I really liked, by the way. It was good. Yeah, I had to spend some time with some characters I didn't, I don't really care about, like any of the cages, but, you know. Nothing's perfect, right? So, I need to stand under his ass. So yeah, there's, there's Liu Kang. Isn't he cool? I really like uh, what they did with his pants. It's look the way they. I don't know if you can see that, but the way they did the texturing, see that? It's really cool. Again, McFarland man. He, he's doing it. He's doing the stuff, man. He's doing the stuff. So, look at those. Nun, nunchaku. All right. I'm gonna go with next. Okay, next I'm gonna go with a little bit of Marvel and DC stuff. We've got the Todd McFarlane, or not Marvel DC, the McFarlane DC stuff. We've got uh, Todd McFarlane's design for Batman. So this, if you don't know, McFarlane's doing all the DC multiverse stuff, and um, this sculpt is how he would design a Batman if he were to completely redesign Batman and come out with a figure of it. And I really like it. I think it's dope. Some people say he looks old. I mean, I think he's awesome. Batman looks great. Um, so let's let's get him out of here. Get him out of here. Once again, we have a trading card that hopefully we don't ruin. Trading card. All right. Batman. 
Look at that. Isn't that cool? Designed by Todd McFarlane. That's really cool. In the 1980s, Tom McFarlane began drawing Batman professionally, working on the classic storyline Batman Year Two and Detective Comics, and creating iconic artwork, including his dynamic cover for Batman number 423. Todd went on to become a titan of the comic book industry and has always had an affinity for Batman, the Batman character. I've always liked the fact that Batman has no superpowers when it comes down to it. He's just a dude in costume. Conceivably, if Batman were in a huge battle in space without any of his gadgets and tech, he could potentially die, unlike Superman. That's what Todd said. Never met Todd McFarlane. I, I don't know. I hear he's a nice guy. Maybe he's not. Who knows? But uh, all I know is, God, he's got a horrible idea with his new Spawn movie. So you got the Todd McFarlane DC stand. This Batman doesn't seem like he's a fan of guns, of course. Even though we've seen Batman use guns lately. But this Batman's all about knives. He's all about stabbing mofos. Stabity stab stab. Look at these knives. Batman knives. He has got a really cool designed battering. Look at that battering. I think that's a neat design battering. It doesn't have the little bat head on top. It's just kind of a more, I don't know, boomerang looking thing. And then, then you got the man himself, Batman. Can you hear me? God, this figure is really cool. So, this is what I like about this figure. Let's go over this. So he has the bat gauntlets, right? Instead of the three things, like he's got the three things, but he's you know it's all spiked up. He's got spikes in his gloves. He's got metal knuckles going on. Like he would obliterate someone's face if he punched them, right? That's exactly what Batman needs to do. He needs to obliterate people by punching them. He's a punching man, right? He's got really cool giant long ears. He's got the real grimacy face. He's got the utility belt. It's got all kinds of shit hanging off of it. I like his boots. You know, very armored boots. Almost kind of ninja looking boots. Um, and then he's got, you know, the Tog Farland signature giant pointy shoulder pads. Right? He's like a pointy shoulder pad version of like Gotham 1980s Delta Burke shoulder, shoulder pads. Right? Um, and then he's got his fucking badass cape, which is folded back, and it comes to a point down there at the very end, right? He's got two little things to put his knives in. So, one, two. Got his knives in there. This Batman's not fucking around. This Batman's here to stab people to death and fight crime that way. Right? He, he He's not playing anymore. This Batman's had enough. Right? He's serving you padded, bladed, armored Batman realness with a slight murderous edge. And I'm all about it. I'm here for it. And it's, it's badass. Right? This is a Batman of the people. Right? This is a Batman for, for 2021. This is a Batman who knows that most of the criminals are going to be way better armed than him. So he's decided, you know what, I'm going to start stabbing motherfuckers. So. So there. Look at that. Look at that Batman. This is actually maybe one of my favorite Batman figures I have. My favorite Batman figure I have is the NECA 6-inch Michael Keaton Batman from Batman 89. My second favorite figure is the uh, White Knight Batman I got from... McFarlane in the DC Multiverse. But this Batman, this is a great Batman. I really like him. He's there. He means business. Alright, the second one I'm going to open up is one I also found. I've been looking for for a long time. So, well, not a long time, but, you know, for a minute. For a hot minute. You know, here in, where I live in Stillwater... All we got for toys, really, is Walmart, and um, we got a couple of Walmarts. Both are garbage for toy selection lately, just like a lot of places in the country, and 
we have um, uh, another place that carries figures is uh, we have um, GameStop, which ours here has really cut down on their figures big time. And then we also have Walgreens, which has some stuff every once in a while. So we've got the next one I got here is BAM! Red Sun Superman, one of my favorite incarnations of both Superman and Batman. I really like it whenever they go and do things different with the characters, do what if story stories or else world stories. So we've got Red Sun Superman. He's here. He's communist. Get used to it. All right, so. He comes with extra hands that are punching hands. All right, so, you know. Fists. Fists of Doom, right? Oh, good old Comrade Superman out of the package here. We have Comrade Superman, right? We've got... He's got his really dark blue suit. He's got his hammer and sickle. He's got his black underpants outside his pants. I've never liked any incarnation of underpants outside the pants. I don't get it. I don't understand it. It's stupid. And uh, but anyways, he's got his cape. You know, he's got his. He's, the head sculpt is amazing. It's this, this, you know, like this determination. The head's a little springy on this one. So let's go ahead and get it. There we go. Should not do that. You should actually do it in hot water. Um, He's got, you know, his arms, he's got his, his super T-pose, and, you know, he's ready to spread the good word of communism across the world, right? Um, let's go ahead and change these hands out. I don't know why they went with just regular hands when we've got, oh, well, I, I, I accidentally gave him another hand that's not the right hand. He's got his Chernobyl deformity, um. There we go. Here's the hand I want. So cool. We will do that. So we've got a fist on him now, and we've got an open hand on him. So, you know, he's extending his hand to you in friendship right now. But if you tell him that he's a damn dirty communist and you're going to take his country over, then he says, BAM! Bam! Fist to the nuts. So, he's got that going on. Really cool sculpt. I really like it. Um, you know, some people are like, well, you know, I wish they would have painted the boots a different color. Well, they weren't that color in the comics. So, you know, you get the color that they're supposed to be. Um, he too. He too comes with a... Little Superman Red Sun trading card. And he has a little bit more than a stand. He's got a little flyy standy thing. So he's got this and this. And we're going to go ahead and put him in it because why not? Superman needs to be flying and, you know. He just needs to feel confident about confident about himself. Superman can't feel that confident if he ain't flying around like a jackass. So let's do uh do a little pose here. Um I guess I'll put it around here. I guess this is how it goes. I'm not for sure. This is a horrible pose. But, you know, I'm just doing it real fast. So there you go. See, he's flying. Superman is flying. See, he's on. You can't even see that he's not touching the ground. He's, he's actually, he's actually doing it. He's actually flying. He's flying away. I mean, you definitely believe that he's flying, don't you? Because he looks like he's flying to me. Whoosh. Go, Superman. Go, communist Superman. All right. 
This next figure is one that I refer to as Batman living his best night, or his best life. This is Batman the Grim Knight, right? So this is was a one-shot um, where it was like an Elseworlds Batman and a uh, different multiverse Batman. And this Batman, it's like, what if Batman, as a little kid, had picked up the gun and shot the motherfucker who shot his parents? How would that have changed him? How would that have warped him? Well, it turned him into this. The Grim Knight. And the Grim Knight is off his fucking rocker. He's basically Batman who's had one many too bad one too many bad days. He's gone full punisher action. He kills all kills all the criminals with all these guns and stuff. And by the end of the comic, they find out that he has set up like a citywide or maybe even a global, I don't remember. I think it's a citywide surveillance area where he's spying on everybody all the time and everybody's afraid to come out of their houses or do anything that might, Batman might even consider being halfway bad because he's gone full big brother and he will come out and execute anybody he wants to. I call it Batman living his best life. I mean, goddamn, that's crazy as shit. We're going to open him up. Holy crap, we've got a whole thing here. So, so that happened. Ouch. These damn strapping packages, man. So, we've got our little stand here. We've got a metric ass ton of guns. And we've, once again, got a cool trading car with him looking over a city like, I will shoot any motherfucker who goes into that 7-Eleven and steals a piece of candy. Right? He's just completely gone overboard. Um... Uzi 9mm. Grenade launcher. Jesus. And, and an RA Batman. So, so first of all, look at this sculpt. That is one pissed off Batman, and I'm here for it, right? Look at all this. He's got two pistols there, at least. Clips all over himself. Another pistol there. I mean, he's just decided, you know, that the way of the gun is how he's going to go in this iteration of Batman. Um, I really like the... Sort of the fatigues on the bottom, which is one cool thing I like about the the new Batman movie, the Robert Pattinson Batman, the Batman, and a lot of the set photos he's got like fatigues on, like he actually would have you know been able to put this shit together. Um, some people are buying black strips of cloth and doing the little cloth thing that he has hanging off of him in the comic. I might do that as well because um, it's a neat idea and it doesn't cost shit. So we're gonna put this stuff on him. So instead of a cape, he has, I mean, he still kind of has a cape, but it's more like a cape of guns, all right? A gun cape. Um, <clears throat> Bruce Wayne is back, and this time he's pissed. You know, it's it's crazy, but like I would almost like to see a live action Grim Knight movie. Um, of course, they would have to do a lot more with the story. Like I said, it was one issue, and it was very, you know, I mean, it was this very contained little story um, that was told. And uh, but I, you know, I could I definitely see like you know like a very very interesting dark take on a Batman movie. Um, he's got the the silver bat behind there. He's gonna gun you down because you stole a loaf of bread. 
You know, he's very much... He's very much Batman. He's very much a Batman I would have liked to have seen in real life. Like, in Washington on January 6th. <laughs> Can you imagine that? Brow, brow. So, yes. There's... There's Batman. He's gonna go protect people. Or he's gonna protect the laws to an extreme. And he, he stands for either you obey the law or you die. Um, that's, that's what that Batman's doing. And uh, it's scary. <laughs> Next one I'm going to show off is one of my favorites, and I thank my brother for grabbing this for me. Oh, God! Somebody's taking out fucking crazy NRA Batman. All right. So, uh, and this is, uh, I was not able to find this anywhere. My, 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 my brother was able to get him for me. I've really been wanting this because I'm obsessed with this character, and I'm so glad I have him now. It is the NECA Defenders of the Earth Ming the Merciless. With uh, a serpent staff, laser blaster, blast effects, and sword. So, um, yeah, let's 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 put this guy together, man. He's like, I'd like to sign board. Oh, he actually had some no get wet stuff in him. NECA figures, you know, they are not my favorite anymore. Um, McFarlane has taken that place. It's funny because it used to be the other way around because McFarlane figures used to be very unposable, unplayable. They were just very, they were just statues, really. They were, that's all they were, were statues. And recently, you know, he's, he's gone complete to the very big posability and the playability and stuff. He's releasing a lot more of the spawns pretty soon in the new era, so like re-releasing old spawn figures. Um, there's a gunslinger spawn I really want to get. So he comes with uh, laser blast effects. And then... This is really cool. Look at the paint job on this. So this is his gun, but look, it's the metallic blue, almost purple. Isn't that dope? That's really cool. I really dig that. I'm going to go ahead... See, it's shooting at you. Ah. And then we're going to go with uh, his... Uh... Be careful here. I don't want to break anything. Look at this staff. Now, this is a staff that would rival that of Serpentor's, right? Look at that. And look at the, look with the, the way they did the, see, that's, that's transparent. Isn't that cool? Really cool staff. I mean, goddamn. And then we have a, oh, we got a lot of stuff, stuff with the, Lot of accessories on this figure. He has one, looks like, extra hand. Black sharp nails. He's got one of his rings. It's a point. You. Look at this sword. Isn't that cool? Really nice detailing on the sword. Even has a cool, God, focus camera. Look at that cool. Look at that. Isn't that dope? And he has a, a less crazy blast effect. Ooh, I can already tell you what one of my favorite point things about this character is. Todd McFarlane could learn from this. Well, Todd McFarlane. Todd McFarlane. McFarlane toys designers could learn from this. We always talk about it like Todd McFarlane's back there building all the toys by himself like he's some kind of some kind of fucked up Santa Claus, but he just owns company. 
So, ooh, is this a wire? Oh, it is a wire, I think. My goodness gracious. So, we have got an actual cloth cape on this guy, right? Um, let's get his joints all loosened up real quick. Oh, this is cool. This is a cool figure. Got all the different articulation you would expect, of course. Ooh, this has got to be this is this is definitely one of my favorite figures that I've got. Period. Look at that figure. Isn't he dope? He's got a metal hand. Yeah. Um, and his cape has wire in the bottom of it, so you can go real crazy with you if you want to, and you know flare it out like that, and it'll stay. Look at that. Isn't that cool? Isn't that special? Or you can wrap him up in it like that. He's going down the hall. I'm being the merciless. I always hold my hand up like this. I mean, it's just really, really dope. And I really want the uh, Phantom figure as well. Those are the, that's the other one I really want to get my hands on. But I have not found a Phantom anywhere. And if you happen to figure out where to get a phantom from, you just let me know. Because I like the phantom. The phantom! I would really like to see them put out a new... I would like to see McFarlane or NECA, preferably McFarlane, um, put out a figure of the Shadow as well. You may not remember the Shadow, but I think he needs a new figure. And again, this hand is really tough to work with. There we go. Now, now we're now we're playing with power. So, yep, he's got his his staff. He's ready to go. He's ready to go be a space tyrant of doom. And he says, "Lactus, I'm bored." Played by the very amazing. Was it Max von Sydow who played him in the movie? Though he wasn't green. Should have been green. But, you know. So, yeah. That's that Ming the Merciless figure. And it's dope. And I'm glad that my brother was able to nab him for me. Alright, our last one is one I found today. And it is another NECA figure. And uh, I've been looking for this one as well. And I couldn't find him anywhere. In this bullshit town I live in, and I finally found one. And I probably paid too much for him, but whatever. It is the old, uh, once again, another NECA Kenner remake of the bull alien, or the rhino alien, I should say. And look at this. Look at this figure, right? Now, this is probably the biggest figure I have. It, it, it comes close to some of my Godzilla figures. <coughs> look at the size of that figure. Holy crap, this thing is massive. That's a massive figure, and we're going to take him out of the fucking box. Look at this. Look at that shit. That is just amazing, right? I really like the old original Kenner figures. I still have an original Kenner figure of the Gorilla Alien, and I have the NECA version of the Gorilla Alien. Um, but I, uh, I've been waiting for this one to come out. Because it was supposed to be a pretty heavy-duty, uh, big-deal figure. And boy, it is. It is a heavy-duty, big-deal figure. This is, by far, other than the Queen, this is the largest NECA alien figure. And I almost wonder if it's even bigger than the Queen. Because, Jesus, this guy's huge. I'm going to put him with my Ripley and my, uh, my uh, Bishop figures I've got. Oh, geez. 80 million little ties wrapped around him. Yeah. Yeah. Look at him. Holy crap. Hopefully this doesn't do what the line last figure did. The uh, alien, the my gorilla alien I got from NECA. The first time I tried to po pose his head, it fell right the fuck off. So I had to glue it on, and that's where it stays. <laughs> 
I mean, look at this sculpt. You got the giant teeth. You got the other pair of jaws in there doing its thing. I want to say it said it's a removable. Yep, removable dome. So it's got like this dome, biomechanical dome, and you got his his brain pieces in there and shit. Um, it goes back on really easily. Stays on pretty good. Um, actually, it does stay on pretty good. It's pretty loose, but whatever. Long ass arms. I'm gonna loosen his joints up real quick. Gotta be careful with these damn NECA figures for sure. They got a little bit of work they need to be doing on their figure joints, if you know what I'm saying. God, even the fingers pose. Sort of. Yeah, you've got. You've got joints here on the fingers that pose. Um, God, this guy's huge. So I believe the old figure was really, really strange. It was one of the strangest of the old alien figures. Ha! <laughs> look at his leg. Excuse me, excuse me, do my backwards knees make my legs look broke? People say, why would you want a rhinoceros alien? That doesn't make any sense. I'm like, why the fuck wouldn't you want a rhinoceros, a rhinoceros alien? It makes all the sense in the world to me. And the one good thing about this figure is if you have an accident and it breaks off, you just got your ball here. So you don't have to glue anything back. It just literally snaps right back on. Easy as pie. So there you go. Um, the feet, the little feet, they kind of move up and down as well. And uh, yeah, you've got one giant crazy son of a bitch for, for an alien figure. Um, and I dig it. It's really cool. He's ready. He's gonna gore you. Um, of course, he threw up his dick here, which is also cool. Rah. 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 So, really neat, really cool figure. Very glad I found it and pulled the trigger on it. It's just one of those figures, you know. and shit how I want them. Yeah. One thing I like about this one is the back pipes don't come off. A lot of them they do and a lot of a lot of the NECA figures when they do come off you're just kind of like hosed you know it's like they come off but they, it's a bitch to get them back on um his head is supposed to there we go you have to be kind of careful with it but you have to be forceful but his head moves way more farther up so that he's more facing forward when you put him down into his action and of course you got a a joint here um, where he he, he does his thing, so. So look at that. He's ready to. He's ready to make some people. Turn some people into freaking. Green mush. And lay his. Lay his, his eggs in they. And they. Fucking bellies. So yeah. That's him. Pose exactly how I want him, and uh, he's 
he's pretty cool. So yeah, that's what I've got. Um, but I also got another figure. I got this. This is for drawing. It's a, a drawing figure that you can use to pose your drawings. Whatever. Um, so yeah, that is the haul from the last few months of my life. Once again, going over these bad boys. You got Liu Kang, Sub-Zero, or not Sub-Zero, Scorpion, Sub-Zero, Todd McFarlane, Batman, NECA, Terminator, Kenner, Redo, um, Cyberpunk, Ming the Merciless, fucking Maverick, Communist Superman, Crazy NRA Batman, Rhino Alien, and Toxic Crusader, Dr. Killamoff from Super 7. Trading cards, extra hands, shit going sideways, babies getting flung out of windows, all that good stuff. So yeah, that's that's what I wanted to show off today. Now i got to go find places to put all this shit. Um, and I'm also going to be starting a new collection soon. I'll tell you about it whenever I get my first one. Um, I also, I think I, I collect the little 3.75 Star Wars figures. Because that's how they've always come, right? Since day one. Um, but w a couple of years back, a few years back, I did go and I got some some of the Black Series, some of the 7-inch Black Series. And I... Uh, I'm going to find a place to display those pretty soon because I ordered another one in. A very controversial figure that they just released. I ordered him in, so I'm going to show him off on here as well because, like I said, it's kind of controversial. Um, and because I want to display him, I want to uh, go ahead and get my other ones out. I've got, I've got plenty. I've got a couple of different Darth Vader's. I've got uh, Boba Fett. I think I've got a Storm Trooper, a Death Trooper, a uh, Ray or two. I got Leia, Han, all those, all those guys, Luke's. Um, so I want to grab those and get those out and show those off one day as well. Um, so yeah, I think that is it. I'm looking around. I don't see anything else I've gotten lately that I want to show off that I haven't shown off already. I got a massive bag of trash now. So yeah. I'm gonna have to go deal with that. So yeah, that's that's what happened. Yeah. Mm, yeah.